Hello, everybody. Uh, well, well, welcome to the webinar this afternoon. Uh, I'm Brett Lonsdale. I'm going to be taking us through the uh, Lightning Conductor uh, for SharePoint Online and uh, I guess also SharePoint 2019. So uh, we'll be taking a look at the, the SharePoint Framework client-side web part version of the, uh, the Lightning Conductor. So we're going to um, start off in our usual way. We're going to take a look at uh, the Lightning Conductor from scratch. So anybody that is new uh, to the product uh, will get a good understanding as to what the product can do um, or um, what it's been able to do for quite some time. Um, but we're also going to jump into some brand new features uh, where we'll be uh, taking a look at three uh, new features. One of them is um, basically external uh, connectors. So we'll be able to connect to, to data outside of Microsoft 365 as well, which will uh, we're excited to, to be able to show you. Uh, we're also going to have a look at things like uh, previewing results before uh, finishing the Lightning Conductor configuration. And uh, we've also got a magic button to talk about. So, uh, so they're the three main features. So uh, we'll start off uh, along with, uh, like I say, the intro to the product and we'll, we'll soon get into those, uh, those new releases. Um, so uh, just for those who are not familiar with the Lightning Tools, we're uh, a company based in uh, in the UK. Uh, we also have a presence in the uh, US as well. And um, for the past 16 years, we've been providing different products that uh, help to make you uh, a lot more efficient when you're using Microsoft SharePoint and, uh, and also Microsoft Teams. Uh, so the Lightning Conductor is, is one of those tools, um, but we also have other products. Uh, we've got other recorded webinars that you can go and check these out uh, on our website. So go to lightningtools.com and uh, click onto webinars. Uh, you'll see some of the uh, the other products that we've been um, looking at over, over the uh, last few years. Uh, so they include things like uh, permissions management, also uh, discussion boards, data integration, and we've also got uh, list uh, sorry, uh, list form actions and uh, and lightning forms as well, which is our, our SharePoint uh, list form designer. And just last month, we also um, talked about the uh, InfoPath forms migrator. So if you've uh, if you've not checked that out, that was a recorded webinar, and you can go and find out information on that on our website as well. Um, but uh, yeah, for today, we're going to be taking a look at the Lightning Conductor. So uh, we'll start off, as I mentioned, with what is the Lightning Conductor. So um, so the Lightning Conductor is a uh, content aggregation tool. And uh, that, that content aggregation tool allows us to aggregate from uh, different SharePoint lists and libraries. That's how it started off back in, uh, well, I think 2008 uh, when we launched the product. Um, so back then it was able to uh, provide us with the mechanism of aggregating content across different site collections, which was difficult to do back then. Um, but it's grown into a, a much bigger product here. We've, uh, we've now got the ability to not just aggregate from SharePoint lists and uh, libraries, but we can also aggregate from uh, search as well, as we can display search results inside the Lightning Conductor. We can also connect to Microsoft 365 graph entities. So that includes uh, things like Planner and To Do and Teams and OneDrive messages and things like that. And uh, we can also navigate other content that is organized into Microsoft 365 groups using the Lightning Conductor. So if you've created Microsoft 365 groups, of course, they will have SharePoint pages, teams, files, uh, agendas, and so on. Uh, so we can connect to that information and pull that into the Lightning Conductor. And uh, now uh, we're extending that with the uh, external graph connectors, which means if your organization has already perhaps extended uh, what you're uh, what you're able to search inside of SharePoint um, to uh, to external content uh, using uh, external connectors for things like Salesforce or Jira, uh, SQL on premises or Oracle on premises and so on. You can now utilize the Lightning Conductor to display those results. Um, and if you haven't done that already, uh, you can speak to your administrators to get that configured uh, so you can bring that content into uh, your SharePoint and Teams environment, um, which uh, means that you have well, spending less time switching different applications uh, in order to be able to see that content. Uh, of course, with the Lightning Conductor, you can build different views uh, and apply styling and so on. So we have the grid view, which is uh, a great place to start off. Uh, that's where we can pick and choose the columns that we want to display. You can add grouping and sorting, conditional formatting and that type of thing uh, to your views, uh, as you can see in the, uh, the, the slide here. Um, but we've also got other ways of creating views as well, which include JSON, uh, XSLT, and also adaptive cards. So um, we're going to be getting into uh, examples of each of those uh, in the demo in just a moment. 
So overall, the Light Editor certainly saves people uh, time when trying to find content. Uh, if you're a, a business user and uh, an information worker, but also if you're somebody that wants to configure this for your users, um, you're saving a, a tremendous amount of time and actually uh, configuring that, um, not having to spend time writing code and so on. So um, let's just quick recap on on what each of those things mean. Um, so we we talked about the different uh, content that can be aggregated. So if we're just using the client side object model, uh, we could use the client side object model uh, search rollup provider. That allows us to go across different sites and site collections, uh, even hubs or entire tenant if you wish. And uh, you can select the type of content um, based on the list type or also the content type, and you can aggregate that content and display it. Uh, so that's your, your SharePoint list and libraries. We can also get into the Microsoft Graph entities, as I mentioned. So that rollup engine provider is giving us access to things like OneDrive and Planner. Um, basically, anything you can uh, you can get uh, connected to using Microsoft 365 Graph, uh, you'll be able to display inside the Lightning Conductor. Uh, we've also got the Microsoft 365 Groups. This is a great way of uh, bringing content across different teams uh, into one view. Uh, so we've got things like channel events, uh, channel calendars, and so on enabled. You can display all of those inside a, a nice JSON view. Um, we've also got the search results as well. This is um, better for performance if you're aggregating content um, that is, is in very large lists or you've got large scopes you want to aggregate against. This improves the performance, uh, but the information is cached, so it's not necessarily real time, uh, but it is generally refreshed sort of every 20, 30 minutes or something along those lines. And then the external graph connectors. This is the, the brand new feature uh, or one of the brand new features that we're going to be taking a look at today. And that is the one that allows us to connect to almost anything. So uh, there's some connectors that Microsoft has provided for you. Um, we're basically going to uh, demo some of those today, but um, it, you could get into creating your own custom connectors as well uh, with code and um, connect to almost anything as we'll be uh, talking about that a little bit later on. And then displaying the content. Um, so four different uh, providers for displaying the content. We've got the grid view. Um, so this enables us to, like I say, pick and choose columns. It's basically a column row format, very much like a SharePoint list view. Um, and you've got grouping, calculated columns and things like that that you can do. You don't need to write any code at all for, for the grid view. There's JSON. Um, so we do actually have some built-in templates, things like calendars and tile views and picture galleries and things like that that you can just use right out of the box um, or you can also customize those or create your own uh, JSON views as well if there's something specific that you want to build. If you want to, um, <laughs> hence the icon here, you could get into uh, building some uh, XSLT templates. Really this is for sort of backwards compatibility with uh, the classic SharePoint, uh, but there are classic calendars, Gantt views and things like that that you can utilize. Um, and then we've also got adaptive cards as well, and we'll be touching on that as well today. This is something that we launched uh, beginning of last year, uh, but uh, yeah, adaptive cards uh, are appearing in, in lots of different areas of uh, Microsoft 365, including uh, Viva. Um, so uh, we make use of those as well. And you can really build any kind of view that you want uh, using uh, an adaptive card. So um, before we get into the demo, just yet summarize as well that everything you see here are mostly going to be demoing from SharePoint, but you can do exactly the same as what I'm going to be doing in Teams. So uh, if you're looking at aggregating content into your Teams channels, um, you can do that too. And that, again, saves you time. If you spend a lot of time in Microsoft Teams, uh, you don't want to keep switching back to SharePoint to access your document libraries and so on, you can aggregate that content into a Teams channel. And, uh, and access it there. And of course, or both, you can, you, you don't even have to configure it more than once. You can configure everything, export that design, and then re-import it into, uh, into a Teams environment. So um, that's just a, a quick intro. And uh, if that went over your head, hopefully um, this will uh, make a bit more sense as we jump into the product and have a look at it in real time. So um, we've got a SharePoint page here. And uh, as you can see, there are no web parts added onto this page. So we're going to start off with the configuration of the Lightning Conductor and to do some uh, very simple uh, configurations, first of all, like I said, before we get into uh, some of the new features. So what I'm going to do uh, over on the left hand side here, I've, I've split my uh, section here into one, one third right, uh, two thirds uh, left. Um, so we've got uh, an even split on the uh, the page and I'm going to add a lightning conductor 
over on the left hand side here. And we're also going to add one on the right hand side as well. And what I'm going to do first of all is just use a quick configuration. So when we hit the configure button, you'll notice that we get into the quick configuration. And this just has some very general types of aggregation that you may want to perform uh, in your organization. So um, they include uh, things like document libraries, task lists, event lists, announcement lists, etc. Um, most of those uh, at the top are all SharePoint lists or libraries, but then we also get into Microsoft Graph entities. As you can see, things like planner plans, Microsoft to-do lists, OneDrive items and things like that. So once we choose what we want to aggregate, the type of information that we want to aggregate, there's some built in uh, filters, if you like, or views. So we've got uh, an all documents view. There's a my documents view. There's a my checked out documents view. And of course, these are just starting points. You can get in and customize the columns that are displayed. You can also uh, customize the filters and so on to create your own. But um, yeah, that just saves you uh, a bit of time. And again, um, is showing some sort of common scenarios that our, our customers use. We've then got some quick configurations for where the content is going to come from. What's what's the scope of the query? So um, the top few of these are using real time client side object model in order to be able to get the content. Um, the bottom few are using search. So you're going to see greater performance and um, that that information will be cached. But what I'm going to do here is just choose the current site and any associated sites. Um, so basically a hub with uh, with associated sites and bring that information in that way. So that's my my scope set. You can be more specific as to what your scope is if you jump into the advanced mode. So that allows you to select certain site collections or certain sites or even get down to the granular level of, of picking and choosing certain lists that you want to include. We then have uh, different view types and these will vary depending on the type of uh, content that we're bringing in. So if I'm looking at documents as I'm here, we've got a grid view and a tile view. If I was looking at things like uh, tasks, then I have um, a card view, which is adaptive cards. And we also have uh, another JSON view as well that you could use, um, uh, uh, which is a calendar. And uh, we also have the grid view uh, and so on. So they will vary depending on the type of uh, source that you're, you're working with. Now, there's a couple of options here. Uh, I'm going to display avatars. Um, so this means that when we've got person columns like uh, created by and modified by, we can actually render an avatar. Um, so uh, you can see who that person is by hovering over them and, and engage with that person as well. Uh, and then we've also got the support document preview, uh, which I'm going to check here. So when I hit save, um, what we get is the documents aggregated from this hub. And you'll also notice because I selected the document preview that I've also got the ability to select documents over on the left hand side here as well. Now, the reason I've done that um, is because over on the right hand side, I'm going to configure this lightning conductor to also aggregate uh, documents. But instead of choosing a scope here, I'm going to select this option, uh, which is just appeared um, based on the fact that there's two lightning conductors on the page. Uh, and this allows me to uh, display the document selected from the other lightning conductor. So I'm going to select that option and you can see there's no further options. It's just a single view that we've got for that one. So when I hit save here, um, you can see it's not rendering anything until I go and select an item. So if I select this PowerPoint presentation by Sandy Usia, uh, we can see that content render over on the right and we can start to navigate that content as well and uh, and jump through that slide deck and if there was uh, another document that i wanted to look at maybe this invoice or something we can go through and select that and it will begin to uh, to render that invoice uh, in that window as well uh, and of course you can increase the size of that as well i'm, I'm still in edit mode at the moment okay so that's our, our first quick easy configuration uh, which was done in just a, a couple of seconds really um so uh, we can also get to customize these views as well. So this grid view, like I said, you could add grouping, you can add sorting and, and so on. All of that we can do whilst we're still in edit mode on the page and we don't have to go into any advanced settings or anything like that. We can do it all just by se selecting the, uh, the drop down on those columns. So what I'm going to do here is actually show uh, an additional column. So what we're seeing is all of the available columns for this data source type, which was documents. Uh, so I'm going to select the file size, which uh, is often useful to see. So we've got the file size showing and um, we'll go in and add a bit of uh, data format formatting to that first of all. So notice the display format uh, gives me the uh, size measurement for the, uh, 
the file size so we could maybe go into uh, megabytes here and, uh, and save that one. So now I also want to highlight anything that is perhaps a, a larger file so we can get into the formatting and do some conditional formatting. So in here we'll set the file size and say if it's equal to, no oh, sorry, greater than or equal to, uh, and I'm just going to put in 20,000. And uh, if that is, uh, if the file size exceeds that, then we want to apply a bit of conditional formatting. And we can do foreground colors, background colors, we can uh, do pill colors as well. So you get a modern pill color type format like you get inside the SharePoint listing libraries out of the box now. Um, and we can also do icons and so on too. So I'm gonna have a little uh, warning here. We'll make that uh, warning icon red and save that. So uh, we just get anything that is on the larger size uh, highlighted uh, with a bit of conditional formatting inside our document library rollup. OK, so that's the uh, a very simple uh, example as to what you can do. Now you'll also notice over on the right hand side here in the Lightning Connector panel, um, I can name that view. So I'm just going to call this um, uh, documents from the hub. So users know what to uh, expect from that view. Uh, and then we're going to go in and add another view, uh, which is going to be OneDrive documents shared with me. OK, so we'll uh, we'll go in and configure that one. So we're not going to work with SharePoint list and libraries. This time we're going to come down here to drive items. And instead of using uh, my drive items, I'm going to choose items shared with me so I don't have to keep following links and so on. I can see those all in one place uh, in a grid view again. Uh, so now I can switch those views uh, to the OneDrive items and there they are. So I can see who they were shared by. Um, I can link to the file. I can see the uh, the other metadata. And again, I've got all those same advantages of being able to show additional columns. So these are columns that are coming from the Microsoft Graph uh, that I can simply select and uh, and display those. And uh, we, again, we could do grouping, conditional formatting, and that sort of thing in there as well. Okay, so um, that's our first couple of uh, of examples uh, using uh, the Lightning Connector. So we'll get into um, a couple more as well in this demo let's just get back into the uh, into the properties here uh, so we're just going to do another graph example and this is going to be my events um, which is a useful thing that you could do uh, so we can come in to uh, events here and uh, you'll notice that we've got um, all events again we can choose where they um, uh, are going to come from uh, so we could use current tenant and uh, we've got things like uh, calendars grid views cards etc as well uh, in fact if i just um bring that down let's let's switch it to outlook events and i'll show you that in a, in a agenda view um, so uh, we could use the graph for this uh, to get to outlook events as well as sharepoint list events and as you can see i've now got uh, a calendar view uh, oh sorry an agenda view of everything that's coming up so that example there is a JSON. It's uh, very different to the other two views that we created where we were using a grid view. Uh, this is a, a built in JSON view uh, that, like I said, you could just go and use as it is, or you could go through and customize it if you wanted to as well. And some of those customizations can be done um, just using the advanced properties, which we'll, uh, we'll also get into in a moment. OK, so there's our, our first couple of examples. Now, another type of list that we might want to work with, I'm just going to jump up here to uh, Microsoft lists. Um, so when we get into Microsoft lists, uh, you can go in and create a new list uh, and you'll see different types of lists here, uh, which Microsoft have been busy creating. So we've got things like issue tracking, uh, event itineraries, asset uh, management and things like that. Um, so I've gone through and created a couple of travel request lists as well. And uh, we've provisioned those in a couple of different SharePoint sites as opposed to uh, in my uh, site. So what I'm going to do is aggregate from them. Um, so we're going to come back up to uh, the Lightning Connector. Here's one of them, uh, which you can uh, see already. Uh, there's another one as well uh, that we're going to aggregate from. So the benefit here is when we create those Microsoft lists in different uh, SharePoint groups or, or Microsoft 365 groups, we may want to aggregate them together so we get all of the travel requests from different groups into, uh, into one view. Uh, so with this one, uh, we're going to click on to add, and I'm going to call this uh, travel requests and uh, this time the quick configuration isn't going to help me uh, we don't have the uh, 
Microsoft list templates in here yet. Um, so I'm going to jump into the advanced mode and we're going to select the object model rollup provider here. Um, which we've kind of already done, um, but we've done it using the quick configuration, so we, we weren't getting our hands dirty in the advanced settings. Uh, we're going to work with the grid view uh, display provider, but this is where you can choose the different display providers as well. And um, when we come down to the data source, what I'm going to do is uh, pick it at the list level. So instead of aggregating a list type from different sites or site collections and keeping it generic, I'm just going to be specific here and uh, and come down to individual lists. So you'll notice uh, inside Lightning Tools software here we have a travel requests and uh, we've also got another one in Lightning Tools sales which I will just find. So here under Lightning Tools sales is another travel request. I promise. If I called it that. Sales team travel request. There we go. We've got that one. So uh, then we can get into the columns. So these are the columns shown from uh, from there. Uh, so we can see whether these requests have been approved. If there was an airline involved, uh, we can pick things like the destination and so on, the hotel that the person's staying in, etc. Uh, I'm going to go in and choose uh, title and we'll have um, reason for travel as well. OK, so that should do. Um, we can then drag and drop these columns around. So you can see we've got a bit more control when we're in the advanced mode as to uh, how we configure this, including the ability to add calculated columns in here as well. So for example, we've got the, the start date of the trip and the end date of the trip. Uh, that's something that I might want to calculate in order to be able to find out how many days are involved in that trip and so on. Um, and then we can also add filtering and other properties at, at this level too. Uh, and then we can get into the display where we can set things like uh, column aliases and display formats and things like that. But Interestingly, with the display format, a lot of that is going to carry through from the list that I selected uh, inside my scope, which you'll see. Uh, so let's just go through and set the title as our linked columns. That's how we can open up these list items. And a new feature that we created a couple of versions ago was this one here, which is open the item in a side panel. So even if this is a sort of custom list, I can select that option and uh, instead of navigating the entire page to the list item, what we can do is just click onto one of these items and notice how it opens up in the modern side panel, even if it was to exist inside a different site. Um, so uh, you'll also notice in here that things like conditional formatting uh, that was inside that back end list has come through. I didn't have to recreate that inside the Lightning Conductor. It's just carried that over from the, uh, the list that I was connected to. All right, so um, that's the, uh, the sort of first part of the demo, just getting you familiar uh, with uh, the, the type of uh, reports that we can generate. So we've seen a JSON view, uh, we've seen uh, the grid view a few times and, and different types of uh, data sources that we can uh, select. So there is just one other I want to, uh, to show. I'm going to duplicate this uh, travel requests here uh, before we get into the new features. Um, because what would be a little bit more useful is to show those in a calendar view. So we've got travel requests in a grid view, travel requests in a calendar view. So I can go back into the properties for that and change the uh, display provider from grid view. And we'll select the JSON provider instead. And when I get down to columns, what you'll notice to, to help us out here is we've got the start date. If we just come down the We've got the trip start or the travel start date and the travel end date that I'm going to select. And if we hover over the information symbol, uh, we've actually got the internal name uh, displayed for you. So notice it reads travel start date and then we'll also have travel end date as well. So what I can do is get into the display. Select the calendar view uh, JSON file and I can set these properties so I can have the title coming through. And here we've got the end dates. So that would be my travel end date. And the uh, start date would be my travel start date. 
OK, so uh, so once we've uh, we've got those, uh, we can just simply save that and we've customized that. So we've now got travel requests in a grid and now we've also got travel requests in a nice modern uh, calendar view as well. And again, we could add conditional formatting and so on uh, to that calendar view if we wanted to. You don't have to get to the JSON to do that. Uh, we can add conditional formatting here. So maybe if they're approved, uh, we could maybe change the background color or something like that. So we'll add a green if they're approved travel requests. And let's just navigate back to there we go. So we can see that this uh, this Italy trip has been uh, been approved. OK, so um, that's uh, some of the sort of quicker uh, type configurations that you might want to use the Lightning Conductor for and hopefully giving you a, a bit of an idea as to what it can do. So let's get into some of the new features that we're releasing. Um, so here in version six, we've got uh, the external graph connectors to take a look at. Uh, we have a, a preview results. So if you are configuring the Lightning Conductor in the advanced mode, uh, you can see what results are going to come back before you hit finish because you might want to customize your query a little bit and so on. And then we've also got a magic button, which if you've eagle eyed, uh, you may have already spotted that as I was going through the configuration a minute ago. So uh, let's just talk about the external graph connectors. So um, inside of Microsoft 365, you can configure your environment to connect to external connectors. So at the moment, using Microsoft Graph, we can connect to as you've already seen, things like Planner and To-Do and uh, OneDrive, etc. Uh, but they're all inside of Microsoft 365. Everything we see here is external to Microsoft 365. So you've got completely different vendors, such as Salesforce and um, Atlassian uh, for Jira. Uh, we've also got some other Microsoft products like Azure, and uh, we can get to Oracle SQL databases. Um, we've also got uh, Microsoft SQL databases as well, uh, even if they're on-premises, uh, if it's Server 2008, or later, uh, and things like ServiceNow, file shares, CSV files, and so on. Uh, you can also connect to websites, uh, as you can see in the, in the top here. And um, you could also connect to other things as well, such as HubSpot or, or whatever it might be that your organization uses as part of its uh, business data. So um, once we've connected to that, you'll be able to uh, preview those results as well. So this is actually inside the advanced configuration. So once I'm, I'm connected to one of those data sources or if I've configured search inside of uh, the, uh, the, the light data, I can preview the results, make sure I'm getting the results that I'm expecting and then carry on with the, uh, the configuration before hitting finish. So you're not having to jump in and out of the uh, advanced configuration mode all the time uh, to, uh, to configure that. And then the magic button, uh, and you'll see all of these in a demo in just a moment. The magic button allows me to convert from the client side object model configurations over to a search configuration. So if you find that your client side configuration was nice and easy to configure because all you had to do was go through and set the scope, maybe even use the quick configuration to do it, um, but then found as content has been added, different permissions uh, and so on, are broken, then uh, what you can do is uh, is convert that using a magic button over to a search configuration. And that saves you from having to learn how to work with search result sources and so on. We can just click the button and, uh, and everything will be migrated for us. So let's take a look at some of these features. So uh, what we'll do is just start off with a new instance of the Lightning Conductor at the bottom here. So we've got a bit more space to work with. So I'm gonna add another instance hit configure. At the moment, the quick configuration is not going to help you out. Uh, we're going to have to jump into advanced mode and under the web part tab here, we're going to go through and select the graph connectors roll up engine provider. So this is the, the brand new one that we've got. And uh, you can work with any of these display providers. Uh, we will start off with the grid view display provider and then I'm going to show you some adaptive cards uh, that we can work with as well. So under the data source tab, um, this is a very simple data source tab. So you'll notice the data source tab is the only one that kind of changes um, depending on the data source. So this is uh, choosing our source using the client side object model. It's quite complex. Um, if we were to use search, then we're configuring a search query in here. If we're using a Microsoft Graph uh, query, then we can choose the entity type that we want to connect to and so on. Um, and so for this one, uh, we're using a graph connector. So uh, we're going to go through and select the graph connector uh, and choose our external uh, configuration. 
So again, we're working with the grid view. Uh, we'll select the one that we're going to work with. So um, we'll, we're going to start off with some Jira. Uh, so uh, we'll select the Jira demo uh, in here and we can change our query. We can set item limits and things like that if we want to. Um, here, incidentally, is our preview data. So uh, I'll just go through and select my columns first of all. You can see that that's bringing back the different columns that I want to work with. So um, I'm going to choose the uh, the issue link, reporter name, the title. Let's drag the title up to the top there. Uh, we'll choose when it was updated as well. So when I go back to my data source and I hit preview, we can see that uh, information coming across. So we've got an issue link. This is going to go straight to uh, Jira where we can see what the issue is. We can see who reported that issue uh, when it was last updated and what the uh, the issue description is. Um, so this is all just looking at the lightning conductor at the moment uh, and, and the issues uh, around that, which you'll be pleased to know are all lined up. Um, so uh, we've got the columns chosen and when we get to the display here, uh, if we want to, we can set column aliases and, and so on. Uh, so if we don't want um, issue link to be one word, we could add a space in there and so on and get that looking how we want it to uh, to appear. Uh, we've also got the things like sticky headers and pagination that we can set uh, and so on as well um, inside that, that configuration. And then at the bottom here, we can also set our linked column, which uh, in this case would be the issue link. Um, and yeah, some of those may or may not be relevant to, uh, to, to this type of connection. We'll just leave those as they are. So when I hit save, um, notice that we've now got that content coming through from Jira uh, into the Lightning Conductor. So um, that's one example. So let's just go through and change the name of this uh, to Jira or Jira issues. And we'll add another Jira issues, but this time we're gonna use an adaptive card. So uh, when we go through to configure it again, we'll get into the advanced mode. I'm gonna do the same thing again. Uh, but this time change it to the get adaptive card display provider. The data source again will be Jira demo. In fact, it may have to be Jira. So let me just choose that one as the same thing. Um, we'll select the columns, um, but everything that I'm going to be displaying is based on the adaptive card. Now notice that we've got an example of the data that we're aggregating here. Um, as our sample input data, which we could use with the adaptive card designer to design our own adaptive card. But one of the benefits of using an external connector is you can do that using Microsoft uh, 365 admin uh, and basically go through and configure yourself an adaptive card in there. Uh, and there's lots of samples to choose from. That gets saved with the connector. So I'm just gonna say, I want to use the one that comes with the connector. Um, so we're checking that box and we'll hit save and we'll change to the Jira issues adaptive card view. And here we go, we've got those same results, but in a slightly different layout. And, uh, and that's just a simple layout. Uh, of course, you could go through and configure your own, but again, these are gonna be hyperlinks that take us to those items. And just to show you one more before we get into how we configure these external connectors, I'm going to create the uh, Lightning Tools website. So uh, we'll uh, we'll configure that one. So again, into the advanced mode and the graph connectors, I'll choose an adaptive card display provider again. And under the data source, uh, we'll choose Lightning Tools. Uh, so this is our, our website. Again, we could pick and choose columns, but it's all gonna be defined anyway through the uh, adaptive card used with the uh, the source. Um, so we'll, we'll select that and let's just paginate this as uh, so we've got 50 items per page and we'll hit save. So now we can choose the Lightning Tools website and this is listing the different product pages on our website. Okay, so that's something that your organization may already have configured so that people can actually use the Microsoft search uh, in order to be able to search your own website. Uh, so we're basically using that same external connector in order to be able to display those results here inside the Lightning Conductor. Okay, so how are these 
uh, configured. Well, let's just uh, jump into the Microsoft 365 admin. So um, I'm going to get there from here. And we'll bring out our side panel. And let's just show all of this, the options. And we're going to go into settings here and then search and intelligence. And inside the search and intelligence, we can click onto data sources. So from there, you're going to see the different connectors that we're already working with. There we go. So um, there's the Lightning Tools website. Uh, we've also got the, the Jira demo ones and so on. If we want to create a new one, uh, we just hit add. And this allows us to connect to the data source. And this is the screenshot that you saw earlier in the slide deck. So obviously, these are all going to vary um, on, on how they're configured. Uh, so if I was to choose Jira as an example, uh, we can basically select that one. It's going to then prompt us for each of these different options. So um, we can then give the connection a name and configure our connection. So that connection is basically going to ask for your Jira instance URL, um, how are you going to authenticate, and then uh, a username and an API token. So you can go through and get that API token from within Jira and, uh, and paste that in there. And once you've done that, it's about managing the schema. Uh, so you can go through and select what it is you want to connect to and so on. That will take a while for that one to work because I would need to index the content and so on. So oops, let me just Pull that back open. Didn't mean to close that. Uh, so we'll have a look at um, one of the ones that we uh, pre-configured and, and look at the, the schema options. So if we go back to the data sources here, so we can create a result type. So on that Jira demo, um, we can name it. So I'm just going to call this one Jira demo two. and assign it uh, to that content source. So in here, you can go through and select uh, the different properties. Um, so you can set your uh, effectively filters. Uh, and then in here, we can launch the layout designer. So, uh, so this is what we were referring to about how you can go through and build one of those JSON views uh, without having to do it uh, manually. So there's a number of different views here. They're all quite similar. You've got a, a blank template. So you can choose one that you like the look of. Um, hit get started. And that gives you that template. So we can go through and edit the layout. And notice that on each of these properties, you can then map it to one of the columns that's coming in from that uh, result source. And of course, the Lightning Editor is going to help you out with that. Uh, with the internal name, you can grab that, map it here, uh, and build out your, your view. You then get a payload editor. Um, so this is your adaptive card. Uh, so it's a case of just selecting all of that, copying it. Um, you can then preview as well from here and and so on. So once you've designed it exactly how you want, you can add different um, elements onto your uh, adaptive card as well. Uh, you can then go back and paste in the adaptive card in there. Um, you can also pick and choose your properties that you want to work, work with and basically review your design and add that result type. And that's where when I went into the light conductor that I could say I want to use the layout that is stored with the connector. So that was using the one that I created. So to get into a, another one, um, let's just add one from scratch. And, uh, and this is going to be uh, based on a website. So I'll choose the enterprise websites. And I'm going to use our sister company, Enlightening. So Enlightening is a company that does coaching uh, around the Power Platform. So I'm just going to select the URL for that website. And we'll come in here and give that a name. So I'll call that Enlightening Coaching 2. <laughs> oh, hang on. I can't have the space. There we go. Uh, we'll put in the URL. And I don't have an existing uh, vertical. We can make this available to everybody. Oh, and I use a sitemap. What am I missing? Oh, I do need to select a vertical, uh, add new vertical. So we we'll just call this one coaching. There we go. Uh, so I can now publish that. 
And I would keep you on the webinar for another 20 minutes if uh, if we were to wait for this to index. Um, so there is one already created here. Uh, you can see in, in Lightning already exists and it's ready. Um, but what that one is going to do is start to, uh, it won't even display just yet. It takes a few minutes to even display. Uh, but once it displays, you'll start to see how many uh, items it's indexed and, and so on. Uh, so there's one that we've already created. Uh, so if I just jump back here uh, to the Lightning Conductor, we could just simply add a new view then for Enlightening. And select that one. So again, in, in a grid view, uh, we'll, we'll work with that. So there's our Enlightening there. And there's one I just created. So you can see Enlightening 2 is, uh, is already displayed, uh, but it probably won't have any content just yet. But in fact, let me just show you that it will have columns. So we could go through and configure the view, but we're just probably not going to see any data coming through just yet. Uh, but let's try it, and then we can always change the source. So um, yeah, there we go. So it, it can't find anything just yet because it's not indexed it. Uh, so what we'll do is just change that data source to the other one. And there we go. There's all of our content pages coming through from the Enlightening website. And of course, you could get into all of your styling and so on as well, or use the JSON view. OK, so uh, that is uh, the type of thing that we, we can do with that. Um, I'm going to do a large content aggregation to show you the magic button. So of course, documents from the tenant, which of course, this is going to be expecting it to go through the tenant using the object model in real time, display the results in a grid view, and we'll have the avatars as well shown. So uh, what you'll notice is I'm going to choose that view, and then we're going to sit here and wait for it to load the data because it's got quite a lot of content to crawl uh, or query uh, in order to display. So it wasn't actually too bad. Um, you can see I've got 34 pages, uh, probably about 50 items per page um, displayed inside the Lightning Conductor. But there is a little bit of a lag um, in that initial load of that content. Uh, and just to show you that again, let's just jump back to Enlightening and then come back down to documents from the tenant. You can see maybe sort of seven or eight seconds, maybe up to 10 seconds to display that content. So that's not acceptable. What we can do is go back into the configuration and you'll see here there's a suggestion. Do you want to use the search roll-up provider? So that is this one here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just hit that and uh, we'll go through and um, create a new view. So we've now got the name of the previous one but just with search engine tagged onto the end of it. And uh, we'll just compare that for performance. This is the client side object model. Taking the 10 seconds or so to load. But I'm just going to show you this documents from tenant search. So uh, just select that. And you can see that that was uh, a lot, lot faster uh, in order to be able to bring back that same content using the search indexing uh, as opposed to the, the client side object model. That was our magic button. So it's basically converted the client side object model to a search index and uh, and that will improve that performance and so on. So I just wanted to show you a couple of other things as well. Uh, so. A few different resources that we have one here is a link to um, learning a bit more about the external graph connectors. So if you wanted to learn how to configure each of those existing graph connectors, that's a great link to, uh, to have a look at how to do that. And it will also tell you uh, how to um, go about creating a new uh, external custom connector as well. So uh, it will give you the steps uh, in order to be able to do that. Uh, but what I'm hopefully also going to be able to do here is uh, open up chat GPT if that's going to behave for me because I know that that can sometimes get a bit overwhelmed. So let's just uh, bring that up here. And what I'm going to do is just ask it. How I would go about 
creating an external graph connector from HubSpot to Microsoft 365 SharePoint Online. Uh, so if we just post that one, it's going to start to list out the steps for me in what I need to do. Uh, so uh, it will give me the steps. So you can just simply follow that through. Uh, it tells you what to do inside of HubSpot in order to uh, generate the API key and set up all your permissions in Azure and so on. Uh, and once you've done that, um, you'll be able to use that with the Lightning Connector and display content from HubSpot and of course other data sources as well. Uh, and part of that is going to be creating a manifest file, which is a, a JSON file, uh, which can also be quite time consuming. It's going to have a, a learning curve and, and so on. So what I'm going to do is just tell this to stop generating that and instead actually go ahead and create me the manifest JSON file that I need in order to be able to connect from HubSpot to Microsoft 365. So we'll drop that in there and uh, hopefully chat GPT, uh, the AI is going to come up with an example for me. And there we go. It's now writing the code. Of course, sample code, it's going to tell me what I need to replace inside that uh, sample code in order to be able to connect to my HubSpot environment and bring that data into uh, SharePoint, which we could then display using the Lightning Conductor. OK, so that's a really valuable resource um, if uh, if you are going to get working with external connectors. Um, and just uh, an hour uh, before this uh, webinar, um, I was watching a live webinar from, from Microsoft on a product uh, announcement called Copilot. Um, and I've dropped that link in here because it's also AI. Uh, I would suggest going and taking a look at that because um, this is just going to completely change the way that you work. Uh, and it's uh, it, there's a, some really good videos and so on um, showing you how you can use AI throughout uh, Microsoft Office, uh, which is uh, really, really valuable. OK, so at that point, I'm going to open up for questions. Um, if anybody has any, Thank you very much for joining the webinar today. Take care.